were being ruled by Pharaoh's kings, or Sar, whose war against humanity is becoming very obvious now, as it should have already been obvious 2,000 years ago, especially when you read in the Bible in Kings 3, 1, how King Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh and even married the daughter of Pharaoh. And here it even says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in 1 Kings 3. Yeah, I'll read it for you. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David, which is Jerusalem, etc. Yeah. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. This is kind of weird, an entirely twisted story. If you think about it, that Moses and his jaywalkers first had to run away from Pharaoh, running for their lives in that famous exodus. And some time later, that popular King Solomon of the Jaywalkers, all of a sudden making an alliance with that terrible enemy called Pharaoh, and even marrying Pharaoh's daughter. Just as Pharaoh's nobility still does so in Europe. Therefore, finding the German nobility of Saxe Gotha Coburg on the throne of England and Belgium, and the German nobility of Pharaoh's house of Zu Waldeck und Piermont and Zu Lippe Bisterfeld, ruling over flat earth, the Netherlands, that is. It's all in the family of the Per A big house of Pharaoh. So King Solomon, through his marriage with Pharaoh's daughter, giving birth to a whole bloodline of little Pharaohs ruling over the jaywalkers, and finally leading to the royal house of Baron de Rothschild, the new Pharaoh ruling over the jaywalker slaves in Israel through an intricate setup of horizontal rule Freemasons. Therefore, they said in the Bible that Pharaoh and his army disappeared in the sea, which is a typical metaphor of that era, as in ancient writings, the sea stands for a mass of people, meaning that Pharaoh had disappeared in the sea of peoples, thus becoming the worldwide nobility ruling over mankind through their new and quite perfect system of the horizontal republic. So here's a list of the jaywalker nobility in Europe. There's an extensive list here, a, and um, there you go. So a lot of coat of arms here. It's, it's real aristocracy. They even have the von here, like the, you know, the German nobility von and here von. But they are jaywalkers, probably directly from King Solomon. Czech, British, French, and um, you know this is one of here. Shai von Koromla, Hevesi von Bischitz, Italian. Oh look, this one. This one here, Baron Lumbroso, said to be from Egyptian J Walker origin. Well, I mean, what do you know, right? Eh? Egyptian. That's what I've been telling you. 
And this is the reason why a lot of people said, because they didn't know very much further, that they saw, you know, Europeans in the white race that were suffering, and they saw jaywalkers, maybe some of them, with a lot of money, like the Rothschild. And they say, and then they, you know, they they generalize it and they say, well, you know, all the jaywalkers, they have all the money and, you know, they're the bankers, which of course is not true. Of course it's not true. The jaywalkers also have nobility like any other people, like the English, the, the Russians, the Germans, the French. You know, all peoples have their nobility including the jaywalkers, only because the jaywalker slaves 2000 years ago, they split and they went on a, uh, on a jaywalk, chased away by the Romans. So this nobility of the jaywalkers, they, they didn't have a country anymore. There are no more slaves, so they had to get them back. Don't you see it? Yeah, German. And uh, if I go down here, oh, where is he? Oh, here. A Rothschild, and there's many, you know? Look, a whole coat of arms and everything. Now you got the traditional story of them. I'm not going to show that all. So, they have castles, they have titles. They didn't buy them, you know? The rest of the aristocracy, they know that they're also from Egypt, from Pharaoh, from King Solomon, who married into Pharaoh, and King David, all of them you know, are masters. All peoples have this pharaonic nobility ruling over them, including the jaywalkers. There's no, no exception, people. So a few days ago, a jaywalker friend of mine from Israel wrote me this because he's waking up through my videos. And here you can see that even the, the normal jaywalker people, they have no idea what's going on. So how can they be the masters of the world, you know? So he's Ziv here. Um, he's writing me this, he wrote me this, this, so I quote, this week I was thinking to myself, how stupid I and all the world was to believe that 20,000 skeletons with pocket knives that arrive from the Holocaust really win over seven Arab armies. By Ziv. So I replied to him, well said Ziv, good thinking. So who helped the jaywalkers to defeat seven Arab armies? That must have been a solid organization who are bound by an oath of silence because no intel has come out so far. The answer can be found through the Latin is fake it cui protest and cui bono and ask who is ruling Israel today? And the answer is Freemasons, nobility, Pharaoh. You're a good thinker, Ziv, Sean. So he's waking up through my videos and um, which is a very good thing, you know, so it's because all peoples, you know, the Nubians, the Jaywalkers, they all think, ah, oh, the white people did it, the white people, the white people. It's the same, you know, for Muslims saying the Jaywalkers did it, or the white, or for the Nubians, the white people, because it's so much easier, like this, you know, to have your scapegoat. Or, but it's not that easy. It goes far, far more deeper. And I'm glad this guy, he woke up and uh, he sees it now. Thank you, Ziv. Toda, which means thank you in Hebrew. So one doesn't have to search very long to find out that Pharaoh is also behind the wrapping up of the Paris Arc de Triomphe. 
like a pharaonic mummy being wrapped up with about 15 meters of linen. Just as that Paris monument of, by, and for our masters got wrapped up with many kilometers of pharaonic mummy bandage in the very same color, namely white grayish. For the pharaoh mummy stands for the resurrection. Just as for this dude here, out of the royal house of Pharaoh, King David. And that's why the resurrected artist of this here calls himself this here, the double headed Christo. And he's dead too. Christo or Christo? The double headed Christo. <clears throat> This means that now this government building is dead and wrapped up as a mummy, as it has apparently disappeared from the eye. And it will resurrect like a wrapped up mummy in exactly 14 days. Just like this whole idea of all these resurrections of the Middle East comes of course out of ancient Egypt together with all the biblical kings and the royal houses of Pharaoh. And I find the numbers one and four of those 14 days in between death and the resurrection of that Arc de Triomphe a lot in the secret symbology of company logos like portraying four items of which one is being taken away, leaving three behind, thus saying the concept of three and four in another way, meaning square and compass. Yeah, like the 14 days between death and the resurrection. So here's the four of 14, and here's the one of 14, one being taken away from the four and thus leaving three. So it says the, comp the concept of three for the compass and here the concept of four, the square. It, it is a square here, see? So the number one is here and the number four is here of the number altogether 14. And even here, is the connection between the double-headed artist Christ O and its original. And I'll quote for you. Three days. There may be a very practical reason for the resurrection to have happened in three days after Jesus' death, scholars say. First century tradition held that only after three days could you be sure someone was dead? And after four days, the spirit was presumed to leave the body. So in three days, the concept of three for our masters enables only Pharaoh's nobility, like this dude here, out of the house of King David to resurrect. And in four days, for the concept of four, meaning us, the slaves, there is no more hope for any resurrection, meaning life for our masters, concept of three, and death to the slaves, concept of four, which is happening today, now with Pharaoh's bug war and Pharaoh's poison in our veins, it will make our spirits leave us. Just as it says here, after four days, the spirit was presumed to leave the body. Four, no more spirit. Three, resurrection. Also is 14, two times seven or double seven. So two times the holy number 
of the pyramid, or twice saying square and compass, which again is related to twice the Christ, the genuine one and the false one, out of a royal house of Pharaoh, like the house of David, which I've explained to you in my last video. Christ O in Paris, Christ O in Paris, the name of the artist. And therefore, the name of the two artists called Christo, whose legacy made the Triumph Arc mummy, is Christo, like two persons, but one name, for two times Christ, one good and one bad, two persons personifying the artistic duo Christo. And as usual, the only ones entitled to leave a worldwide message to Pharaoh's global descendants and Freemasons are the elite bloodline offspring of Pharaoh themselves to emit and send this 14 million euro message as always out of France, where it all started, both Old World's Order and the New World's Order. The double-headed Christo, two birds saying, we are one. Christ O, the bloodline, we are one. Two birds, look at it, look at the image, two birds, it says the bloodline, we are one, like Christo, the artist duo, being two persons. So, birdie birdie, with the two heads, can be found everywhere. The Freemasons have it, with birdie birdie in an octagon. The Knights Templars have it, like here, the Order of the Knights of Jerusalem, with a Swiss cross, and watch that funny tail, which is the typical tail of a phoenix. And the phoenix also has that oriental resurrection story of Birdie Birdie rising again out of the ashes. And here it says, right, the phoenix bird is reborn by rising from the ashes of its predecessor. And who's the predecessor? Oh, Pharaoh, that's where they all come from. So this was written by a Freemason, eh? Yes, you understand? And here too, the Order of Malt, with Templar's cross in black and white, for the Teutonic Knights. And watch out, Canadians. There it is again, your Fleur de Lis maple leaf here it is in the middle of the swiss cross well maybe some queen maple was having that paradisal leaf on her genitals and shouted leave me alone as she had difficulties pronouncing the v in leave maple leaf thank god they didn't have any Adam and Steve yet, in those good old days, shaking it in the sand between Pharaoh's pyramids. There's even a Victoria commandery beating up the Aussies in a police uniform. Like here, where Australian children get shot at by Pharaoh's polis with our master's pyramid in the back. Here's the pyramid. So you can see it on this channel here. The Socialist Republic of Victoria. Go and uh, go and support them. September 22nd. I'm gonna call them the double headers 
from now on because after my video the nobility world wars soon it won't be allowed to say nobility or aristocracy anymore by the thought police so people a new word on the list next to jaywalkers the pink list killers the nubians and the bug wars the double headers for pharaoh's nobility ruling over us as in dubby the double-headed eagle phoenix a hey, swissy no swissy we haven't forgotten you and of course there's also the coat of arms of russia called dobinovsky and dobinovsky comes from the tsars or pharaonic tsar meaning the king pharaoh in pharaonic demotic there you can see it dobby or dobinovsky double the double headed the double headers also a templar's cross of course this is saint george killing the dragon Templars rule the world. There you see, there's the world here, the Templars. And uh, the aristocracy. Um, well, you can fill that in yourself. And look at the tail. It's the tail of a phoenix. And yeah, let's scroll down a bit. Yeah coat of arms of the Russian Empire it's even the Hanshar the um, the Muslim sword all included it's all the same a lot of crowns the phoenix tail Okay, he got already in, in the 16th century, Ivan the Terrible, yeah, also a double header. Yeah, Ivan the Great in the 15th century, a double header, all double headers, you see. The Tsars, yeah, uh, all double headers. Paul the First. Templars cross, a, um, of course, King uh, the uh, Saint George. It's, it's as I found on that uh, Templars um, chapel. There was uh, with the chairs turned around. There was a, uh, a symbol of Saint George and the um, the Templars cross. So then, who's the dragon? Well, they killed the uh, original kings, and. Um, also killed the people present day coat of arms of russia double headers and that's also our politicians you know they're double headers one day it's this the next day it's that you know double headers now why the double headed birdie because they're all heads from the same birdie birdie worldwide there a big royal house of pharaoh saying two birds we are one the knives are forming a crown can you see that the crown here and underneath hidden underneath the teeth of this bloodthirsty double header Therefore, Christo, or Christo, the double-headed artist duo by the noble name of Vladimirov Yavachev, certainly is a descendant of Russian Tsars and maybe a lost survivor of the Romanovs 
rebirthing out of the fire like a phoenix with his mummy resurrection of government buildings of our pharaonic masters. So again, the number 14, as for the 14 days of the resurrection exercise, and for 14 million dollars or 14 million euros, probably meaning that there are 14 million of them worldwide, because 14 million euros is a bit high for some plastic bags covering, covering the monuments. So there must be some hidden meaning behind that number of 14 million, probably referring to 14 million pharaohs on all key positions, now simultaneously putting on police uniforms to beat the hell out of their slaves, just as the German nobility did, like Josias to Waldeck und Piemont, massively joined the SS to murder the original German nationalists in 1934 and slaughter all the soft targets of all the Nazi massacres. Same thing, same double names of the double headers, nothing has changed. You can see his double name, Waldeck Piemont. They just change jackets all the time, which is part of their big lie, which is their primary weapon. In those days, they wore an SS uniform by Hugo Boss with double S, and now they wear a police uniform, but still the same contents inside. Like the Polish police logo here, showing the octagon of the Nazi Templars, a square in the middle, and all around it the concept of three saying square and compass all over the occult Polish police logo. So here you see the whole thing is an octagon. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight corners in it. In the middle is a square. It's in white and blue, blue for the war against humanity and white for the new world order. And the new world order is them. That's why there are three things here like a house, every time I look it's like a house, the white house of Pharaoh, this is the new world order and there's three for them, which is the side of a pyramid and here there are little squares as well. So it's all there, you know, it's um, Freemasonry because the police are full of Freemasons, especially the higher ranks. Here you can see it, <laughs> Illinois State Police, square and compass with a G in it. Everywhere square and compass, everywhere. Connect Connecticut, Colorado. Here it has an octagon as well. Just as the, uh, the Polish logo, which has a square in the middle for the square. And all these, you know, pyramids with, uh, with three parts in it for the concept of three, referring to the compass. And here it has, a, it has another compass. Uh, the Worldwide Freemason Police Blue Army. So the Christo or Christo artist couple are of course full-blooded aristocrats. The double-headed Christo died in New York. He in 2020, 84 years old, and she died 74 years old. She lived in Bern, Switzerland, and he got transformed in the Kunstmuseum Basel in Switzerland, the base of Pharaoh. Her family name was Dona de Gibon. So 
I immediately recognized the aristocratic de in between the double name. And also he had a double name, Vladimirov Yavachev. And of course, the nobility always marries the nobility. So this is the artist couple who wrapped in the um, Arc de Triomphe like a mummy. And for these two persons, they call themselves just Christo or Christo because they are double headers. And here, this is the guy, Christo Vladimir Yavachev, until 2020. So it's being wrapped in posthumously now, one year later. And she, uh, Jean Claude Denis de Guibon, a typical French aristocratic name. And she died in 2009 in New York. And here I show you, this is Wikipedia. You see, they're also wrapped in the Reichstag in Germany, another government building. You know, only these people themselves, you know, they get access to the government buildings. And, you know, if you would do it, put a plastic bag on it, you know, you go to prison for this, you know, for destroying state property or something or whatever they lie together so it says here and he was transformed after visiting the kunstmuseum in basel and the kunsthaus in zurich it's all, always switzerland in it and that's very important you know because it's a base you know yeah the family lived in Bern of uh, jean-claude dena de guibon Always Swizzy, Swizzy, Swizzyland, always. It's their base where they got all their money, where they, they cut transform. There's this dude, dude here. So this is the double-headed Christo in Wikipedia. All double-headers with double names and deep into resurrection stuff. You name it. She's out of the house of the French noble house of de Guibon. Here you can read it, Famille de Guibon. With a pharaonic sash in their coat of arms. Here's the sash. It's the coat of arms, the simple, the simple one. A crown, two pharaonic looking dogs, which you can see here in their more complete uh, crest here with the, the pharaonic looking dogs here. Here it says Seigneur de Guibon. Here you can see the uh, the pharaonic hound. You know, looks like that, eh? And um, the concept of three circles in their coat of arms, which is them, are masters. And here. Funny enough, squares on one side, I'll show that to you. Like down here, like here. Yeah, here it's got squares on one side and triangles on the other. It's weird, right? Eh? So, funny enough, square on one side and triangles on the other side for square and compass. And they have a comparatively high amount of um, of generals running in the family. Yeah, look, General de Brigade, General de Brigade, General, 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 Military, General, de Guibon, de Guibon. Of course, the generals are all aristocrats. And therefore, they have a lot of blue for the war crown of Pharaoh in their coat of arms, like here. And in the crest, there is their nobility slogan saying, J'attends, je prétends, et j'espère en tout temps, meaning, I wait, I pretend, 
and I hope under all circumstances. Now, what is this aristocratic branch waiting, hoping, and pretending for? Like here, j'attends, je prétends, et j'espère en tout temps. In the nobility, there are only two main possibilities, or a combination of both. Either they are loyal to the king, against the king, or for the union of both. How to find that out? Well, quite easy. Just find out where de Guibon noble house comes from. And if there are any Templar commanderies in that area related to the house of Guibon. So I punched this here, the Guibon Templier, Templar, in the search machine. And to my surprise, it's full of the Guibon descendants in a town called Voulen des Templiers, meaning Voulen of the Knights Templars. Even with an authentic Templar commandery called the Priory of Voulen of the Templars, it says Priory de Voulen les Templiers, the Priory of Voulen of the Knights Templars. A Priory like the notorious Priory of Sion of Switzerland, who set up that book called the Protocols of the Elders of Sion with an S rather than a Z. Because in French, the original language of the Knights Templars and their nobility, Sion or Sion, is written the correct way and with an S. Le Protocole des Sages de Sion. Therefore, I've had it confirmed, what I already suspected, that the Guibon nobility were hoping and waiting for the King of France to be replaced by the Templars' Republic. Here's the town full of de Guibon, Voulen, Le Templier. And here you can see the coat of arms of that town. Oui, what do I see? Two dudes on one horse. And here's their castle. And here it is in France, in Burgundy. Burgundy, Franche Comté. I've been filming next to it. I'm not sure if I filmed it as well. I don't remember. The nobility house of de Guibon, therefore pretending to the king to be his loyal servant, as saying to the king, Yes, my lord, the people of France are happy and they've got their bellies full. While in fact, the French children were dying of hunger with their food taken away by the Templars and their Swiss mercenaries all together, leading to that so-called uh, French Revolution, which was only a transition from the old world's order to the new world's order and to take the king away. And that's why another king who had a lot of problems with the Knights Templar, so King Philip the Fair, yeah, he said, the ones we love the most are the ones most likely to betray us. So why did the French king say this? Because all the problems he had with the Knights Templars, they were in fact his cousins and of the same family, because the Knights Templars are also from the nobility. Here you can see it, the Priory of Voulen des Temples, or the Templiers. And uh, so, as the crest of this noble family of de Guibon says, always pretending to the king, and hope and wait until the people will explode, topple the king, 
and chop his head off. So the slogan of the House of de Gibel portrays the Templars' strategy to get the Republic behind the powers behind the French Revolution. And here is an old drawing of that commandery of uh, Voulen of the Knights Templars, it says, a commandery. And uh, it was made right after the French Revolution from 1797, 1825, and the revolution was in uh, 1789. A very big commandery related to the family of de Gibel. It is therefore no wonder that this very same family by their descendant Jean-Claude Denis de Guillebon gives out this new message at the most important monument for the Republic as the Arc of Triumph was made right after the French Revolution of 1789, installing the French horizontal third new world order republic in the world after switzerland in 1291 and the american revolution by marquez the lafayette and his man in 1776 in america thus planting the french statue of liberty equality and fraternity, liberté, égalité et fraternité, by the French Freemason Bartholdi in New York. So, only 17 years after the French Revolution of 1789 and its Republic, in 1806 the construction of the Arc started on orders of Napoleon to honour the horizontal rule of the new republic because Arc means to rule from the old Greek Arcos, the Arc of Triumph or the Triumph of the New Rule as in the name the Arc of the Covenant meaning the ruling alliance an alliance of the jay walker people with pharaoh's rule like the rule of pharaoh king solomon about which the jay walkers except a few erevrav don't know anymore what it's all about exactly so ark it means the rule and covenant it means alliance so the rule of the alliance, which is probably just a piece of paper which, which was in here. And uh, they probably melted the gold to make something out of it and the paper got burned and it's disappeared forever. Just as we, the white people, don't really know anymore through all the resets, like the two world wars and equally administered and to all the peoples of this earth. We also have Joan of Arc, Jeanne d'Arc in France, meaning Joan of the power of rule, as she was empowered by the French king himself as a delegate of his rule or Arc, empowered to lead a huge army. Joan of the Rule, Joan of Arc, as the French nobility already knew back then that the French womanizers like to follow the women into battle this time. Or Noah's Ark, related to the new covenant after the big reset, after the deluge needing a new set of rules also called arc today 
we know exactly what this metaphor of the biblical deluge means. Just as today's bog war, where the ones who have Pharaoh's poison go left, and those who don't to the right, like standing in front of the angel of death in Auschwitz, the Swiss Dr. Mengele, right, left, 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 right, you must stay for a little longer, go left, you, we can't use you anymore, if you'd please be so kind to go to the right, thank you very much. The double-headed Christo, symbolizing the two Christs, Jean-Claude Dena de Guibon and Christo Vladimir of Yavachev, also with a double name of the Bulgarian and even more likely Russian nobility, are in fact posthumously like a mummy themselves honoring the rule or Ark of the Republic, making it disappear for its resurrection in 1414 days. The Ark of Triumph was uh, finished in 1836 and inaugurated by the French King Louis Philippe, a member of the Order of the Garter who had lived 20 years in Switzerland, the mother of all horizontal republics. Here you see the king here, yeah, King Louis Philippe, and here it says he fled to Switzerland in 1793 after being connected with a plot to restore France's monarchy. His father, Louis Philippe II, Duke of Orléans, Philippe Egalité fell under suspicion and was executed, and Louis Philippe remained in exile in Switzerland for 21 years until the Bourbon uh, restoration. So you can imagine they did a lot of talking there eh, in Switzerland. Eh? You get it, eh? It was the first New World Order in the world. So no wonder. You know, uh, he created or he had this, uh, the Ark of the Triumph, which is really the monument for the Republic in France, number one monument for the Republic. Of course, you know, after all the talks in Switzerland, you know, he, he made this uh, because Switzerland is the first Republic in the world. Uh, here too, it's, it's, it's all about Switzerland here, you know, and... Yeah, he then left with his beautiful Valley Boudouin. That's another guy, eh? His oh, eyes faithful, sorry. <laughs> For the heights of the Alps and then to Basel, where he sold all but one of his horses. Now moving from town to town throughout Switzerland. There's a lot of things here about Switzerland. And um, exact here, here's a picture. Ex early in his exile, Louis Philippe was a teacher of geography, history, mathematics, and modern languages at a boys' boarding school in the Reichenau, Switzerland. Uh, he also went to. What's the, okay, now. Right, you can really find it up yourself. And here you can see in my latest film, the nobility um, world wars, that here Louis Philippe, the King of France, he was an, a member of the Order of the Garter. So he lived from 1773 until 1850. And in 1844, he became a member of the Order of the Garter. So that means he was not a real king, he was a, a constitutional monarch who made the alliance with the Knights Templars in this union. Not real king Louis Philippe of the French 
constitutional order of the Garter monarchy, founded the French Foreign Legion in 1831 with its first commander, the Swiss Colonel von Stoffel, another aristocrat, of course. So I can't find any more. They took it out that the, the Swiss Colonel was the first commander. Maybe it's still in it, but I'll I still have it in a video I'll show it to you. So here it says, history. The French Foreign Legion was created by Louis-Philippe, the King of France, on March 10, 1831, from the foreign regiments of the King of France. Recruits included soldiers from the recently disbanded Swiss and German foreign <coughs> regiments of the Bourbon monarchy. Swiss mercenaries are always to be found to be found all over Europe. And I show you I show you their their coat of arms or their their logo. I don't know where it is. No, it's up here. No, I like you. This is the logo of the French Foreign Legion. So what do we see? It is a fleur de lis here. One, two, three. So there's the concept of three because the fleur de lis is the symbol of the French monarchy. So there's definitely a fleur de lis in it, which is them, a master, is the concept of three. And around it, there is one, two, three sort of flames or whatever it is for the concept of four which is us so we are like defending holding it all upright you know the, the people the Europeans um, holding it all upright and fighting for the concept of three so the concept of four us are like fighting for them you know and they they put their, their pockets full afterwards Right? While, while the people die, the slaves uh, you know, always been fighting for them. So you see it in all their symbols, people. It's all over. And it reminds me a bit of the Ankh symbol, but upside down in a way. Green and red. No, that's the same thing. I already told you. Green is down at the pyramid, you know, that's us. And red is the old world's order, the uh, the red house of Pharaoh, the Pertasse, which is them. So, you know, we, green, we are fighting for them. You know, it's it's everywhere. And they call it the, the you know, like they call it the French Foreign Legion. Because legion, legio, in, in Latin, it means many. So, um, you know, they, they can lose a couple of us, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, you know, like that, you see. And in this older video of mine, like seven years ago, on my channel Hatsafrat, um, I show it where it's it, when it was still in Wikipedia, that the first colonel of the French Foreign Legion, that he was Swiss. And um, here yeah, it says the British, the British Swiss Legion. The Swiss were everywhere, everywhere in the world and in Europe, they were fighting for money. Now they let the others do the fighting and they have their Swiss banks and, you know, they only you know, use that. But Octagon, the, um, the death squads of Octagon, they, they still exist and they operate all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of interesting uh, here. The Swiss have fifth columns everywhere in the world. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting um, links here. Oh, there's a lot actually. Oh dear, look at that. You have a whole week of uh, of work to go through this, eh? So it was on um, in 2014 in uh, on my channel Hatzefratz. So the French Foreign Legion, made in Switzerland, 
good march five years later through the arc of triumph in 1836 the year the inauguration took place the whole mummy exercise of the arc of triumph is for honoring and almost worshipping the fifth republic of france and its symbolic resurrection when the mummy wrap will be taken off on october the third because the next day will be october the fourth which is exactly the date upon which the fifth republic of france came to life on october the fourth in 1958 what a bunch of sickos there was nothing about this in the media of course because this intel is for the initiated ones only the freemasons being the masters of the republic and a ruling on all key positions so here it says in wikipedia um, here it says la cinquième république the fifth republic from october the 4th 1958 onwards so uh, it happens to be exactly the same date when they take the wrapping of the mummy the arc of the, uh, the triumph so it's like a resurrection of the fifth republic right that's that's what it all that's what it's all about so this here is in uh wikipedia here it says wiki and uh regime républicain en france this is the uh, where it is in for the slaves it's just some exorbitantly expensive artwork and appearing innocent by its stupidity so here you can read it here it says christo 14 million euros arc de triomphe yeah 14 million euros christo 14 million euros I'm sorry people, I can't open it up for you and show it to you because I just don't want their cookies. I click nothing with cookies. So, as this again is a big event that gets into all the world's media, there's yet another global message delivered with it by these criminals. Just as the April 15th, 2019 arson of the Notre Dame Cathedral being the insider kickoff signal for the global bug wars, which started in December 2019 on a Friday the 13th on which you have more information in this video here on the same channel here's the title the nobility nobility got their runaway slaves back whom the republic had chased away uh, it's around at uh, 16 minutes the posthumous double-headed christ art performers also similar similarly mummified another symbol for the republic in yet another country on june 23rd 1995 and also for one for 14 days between death and resurrection every time the same funny huh same 14 days the same symbol for the republic in the building same mummification the same christo artist the same resurrection and the death in fact relates to 1933 when hitler had the reichstag burned down the same year the weimar republic ended 
and its resurrection in 1946 after the war. So here you see the German Reichstag. That's the symbol for the Republic in Germany. Just like Arc the Triumph is the symbol for the Republic and the New World Order in France. There is no other building like this. Not in France and not in Germany. And they're doing this resurrection mummification ritual. Now, what is the next big event at the Arc of Triumph? After the date of the beginning of the actual Fifth Republic on October the 4th in 14 days, which I already told you. So here it says it was the, the, the French Fifth Republic established on October the 4th, 1958. And this is when the uh, resurrection will take place of that mummification of the symbol for the Republic in France. <laughs> this is not a coincidence. Here yeah, the logo, uh, Liberty, well, I explained that to you in my film, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil. And this, of course, is the Farches. It's a bundle, you know, it's wrapped together with an X. And uh, it means um, uh, one of these, you can break it, but all bundled together, you cannot break it. So this means one for all and all for one. Or like Mr. Pharaoh Trump said, where we go one, we go all. It's exactly the same thing. And it has an X on it because it's a weapon against us. And it's all a chain around it. It means we are chained, you know. We are their slaves. There's no way out, you know. So, yeah, I can scroll down a little bit. You can read it yourself. Uh, the, all of the, the presidents and the French president of the Fifth Republic will walk us through history from Pharaoh's vertical old world order reign until the actual new world order horizontal re republic where Pharaoh Macron III will stand in an open car and symbolically moves through history and celebrating their rule over humanity, starting at that authentic Egyptian 22 meters high Luxor obelisk, internally referring to their origins and beginning of their conquest of the earth and over all peoples on it until the end system of their new world order republic of today of which the arc of triumph is their accumulation of power and 2000 years effort to dominate humanity from their pharaonic obelisk, the symbol of the pharaonic domination, which they always planted first after having taken over the power over a tribe, nation or region. And at the end, Pharaoh Macron III will arrive at the most perfect total control rule history has ever seen, symbolized by the Ark of Triumph, the day on which Pharaoh Macron III will travel through their history, showing their triumph of ruling over us, will be 11-11, the French Armistice Day and end of World War I. On November the 11th, the end of the German monarchy and the abdication of the German emperor. So, you'll better watch this date because the mummification of their Arc de Triomphe 
triumph of ruling over us might very well be the worldwide message of another timeline towards another major crime attack on humanity by Pharaoh on November the 11th. It's exactly the same Arcos ruler layout in America, with on one side a huge obelisk, symbol of the Pharaonic domination, out of which the conquest of Earth and humanity started, with on the other side the American symbol of the Republic called the Bearhead White House, representing Pharaoh's incredibly efficient total control system over humanity through the parliamentary horizontal rule of the Republic. Same as in France, same layout, same hidden meaning, same masters, same origins, and same end result from Egypt till Republic. The mummification of their Republican triumph of rulership is, of course, in white. For Pharaoh's White House, Berhet, standing for the New World Order, Republic, and tied up with red cords, referring to the Old World Order, Red House, Bertasser, Monarchy, holding it all together because the origins and common element to all of them holds them all together. It is probably another message out of Per Isis, the house of Isis, also called Paris. And many towns in the Paris district are called Par Isis. Par Isis. It says Ville Par Isis, the town of the house of Isis. Or here, Val Par Isis, the valley of the house of Isis, also in the suburbs of Paris, like it says here. And here, Cormeille en Parisis. Cormeille en Parisis. It's also Ile de France. It's, it's full of it, and they know it. The mummification of Pharaoh's triumph of rulership also means that they are hiding under the veil and then come back. Just as the Knights Templars were hiding in Switzerland from the French king and came back to install their republic exactly on that October the 4th, the day of the Fifth Republic in France. Therefore, the Templars' colours, red and white, of the wrapping, colours originating out of ancient Egypt. That's it, folks. They hide and lie hiding under the wrapping, and they don't tell us what it all means. They hide and they lie. They hide the lie. The most important monument of the Republic in France, hidden under a veil, meaning we, the people, don't know really by whom or what we're being ruled and where they actually come from. 
like deep state, shadow government of the hidden hand of Freemasonry. That's why they call it the monument for the unknown soldier with that hypocrite's eternal flame. Because the expendable people were just helpful in toppling the king for their transition into their new republican rule. The dumb sleeple not knowing what they were actually fighting for. Therefore, the unknown soldier or the soldier who didn't know. The symbol of the new rule republic officially dedicated to the armies of the revolution because without the help of the ignorant slaves the new masters could never have succeeded we help them fight for them and die for them in all those wars we are being led in through media lies false propaganda and false promises only to be betrayed and stabbed in the back by them in the end definitely getting stabbed by the mummy republic and the return of the mummy good night y'all close your eyes don't think anymore go on your knees bury your head deep in between your legs and kiss your ass goodbye.